Tonight, the weirdest program on television is back on. It must be 5 o'clock in the East. Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. Tonight, me, an old chair, and Judge Napolitano. I mean, what else could America want? Come on. Hello, America. Tonight, I want to ask you uh, this question. Do we trash or restore? I want, to, I want to show you a picture of my grandpa. This is, this is my grandfather. He was, his name was Edward Lee Jansen. That's me over here. I think I must have been about seven years old. I loved him. He was a self-educated man. He was um, an auctioneer. Um, he worked at Boeing. He was a machinist at Boeing. He was a farmer. He was the greatest storyteller in the world. And I remember him telling me stories when I was growing up. And he would, oh, he would always tell me a story in the same place. Uh, he had an old chair that he would sit in. And he would sit back, and I'd sit in the chair across from him in the room, and he'd start telling me a story. And he'd always get quieter and quieter, because my grandmother, who was never in the room, she could hear him in the other room, and all she'd ever say is one word, his first name, Edward! And then he'd kind of look out, and then he'd get a little quieter, and come here. It took me a long time before I realized my grandfather was just making these stories up. They weren't true, and that's what my grandmother was yelling at. But he was an amazing man. When he died, he was, he didn't have very much of material things when he died. Um, there was really only one thing that I wanted. There was one thing that I wanted, one thing I asked for. I think I was maybe 20 when he died. It was that chair. This chair. It's in pretty decent shape now, but this chair was falling apart. My wife for Christmas, just had it completely refurbished. I even wanted to ask her how much she spent on refurbishing the chair, because it had to cost, I don't know, a hundred times more than the chair was even worth. She had to bring it to a guy in Connecticut, uh, and he was so proud of it when he finished. I went down, my wife didn't wrap it. She went down to the restoration place, and I didn't even know where, I'm thinking, why are we here? And uh, he was so proud of the work that he had done. He had shored everything up because it had become weak over the years, and it was worth saving. It was worth restoring. When you want to restore something, when you have a piece of furniture, you have to first realize, you have to ask yourself, is it worth saving? Is it? You have to look at the damage. And if you say, yes, it's worth saving, as you look at the damage, you have to think, how, how, how do I save it? How do I repair it? What did it look like in its original state? Then you have to strip it down, repair all the major structural flaws, strip down all the layers of paint that covered its natural beauty, then seal it, and then protect it. I love this. Makes me miss my grandfather. He had a fourth grade education. This chair is a lot like our country today. It's getting old. It's been around. We've abused it. We've forgotten about it. A lot of people have tried the chair out. Some people have stood on it. Some people have, you know, put a TV set here. I think for a while I had a little TV set when I was in my 20s. I think I used this as a table because I couldn't afford a table. People may have altered it, banged it up a little bit, it became weak and wobbly. So now, as a country, we have to decide, is it worth saving? Is it worth saving? That's the question. How do you even answer that if you don't know what the founding principles of our country is? if you don't know our own history. Is it worth saving? This is the question that, this is the question that we have to ask ourselves now when it comes to the country. 
Because we're being told every day, and we're going to be told even more, because the worst is still in front of us, and that's okay, we'll make it. But we have to ask this question, is it worth saving? Because somebody's going to come and say, this system doesn't work. It's never worked. It's always been bad. It, just, it hurts the poor. It just enriches other people. What do you say? We try an idea not from Madison, but from Marx. Should we? It's not worth saving. I think it is. Well, then we have to look at the damage. If we believe it's worth saving, then we have to be honest and say, what needs to happen to it? We have to look at the structural flaws. Well, there's a lot. There's massive federal agencies, corruption, out-of-control spending, career politicians, special interests, nanny state mentality progressivism. Well, there's a, lo there's a lot. There's a lot. We have turned our chair into a rickety old damaged chair that has so many layers of paint on it we can't even we can't even see what it looked like and that's what we have to do we have to figure out what did it look like in its original state if we want to restore it and stop putting new coats of paint on it what did it look like and then the hard work comes you gotta strip it down you got to sand it and sand it and sand it. You got to sand it with rough paper and then you got to sand it with really light paper. Some people will come to you and they'll say, "Hey, yeah, no, just do this cuz it's really quick. It's going to take all of the paint off. It will destroy the natural beauty of the wood." In order to fully restore it, you have to know what it looked like when it was first created. People are still running to the politicians, and they'll say, yeah, this politician, man, he's going to take all that off. Yeah, well, really? This election isn't going to mean anything at all if we don't go back and learn or relearn what the chair looked like when it was made, and then take the care to actually do it the right way, not the fast way. Because guess what? Politicians on both sides of the aisle have been piling coats of paint on this chair and making it ugly and hideous for years. You know, I told you last year that this show was going to change. It has. I hope you've noticed. Last year, I just tried to figure out what was going on. Now that I do, I don't want to play the game that all the other TV shows are playing. All the other TV shows, not all of them, but... A lot of them will focus on the R's and the D's, and that's important. You've got to know what's going on in Washington. But this role is going to play, this, this, this show is going to play a different role, play a, a different game, if you will. We'll give you the news of the day, but we're not looking to fix the country through a politician. I believe that we have to fix it as individuals. We have to know what it originally looked like. We have to know our own history. That's why I've been concentrating so hard on history. And today, I know that it's right with every fiber in me because, because your solutions, if they are centered in anything but the principles of the founding of this country, they're not going to work. You know that to be true. I know that to, to be true. But today, I have... I've got to show you some stuff today and tomorrow. The people who want to fundamentally transform America, who want to change this chair into a footstool or firewood, they know history is important too. There were rallies today in California and all around the country. They were promoted as... Look at these pinheads. They were promoted as saving education. Well, who, who doesn't want to save education? Stopping California for cutting the education budget. But the education budget wasn't the real goal. Let me show you a little something about the people involved in these protests. These are the posters that were used to promote this right here. Education is a human right. Really? Wow. Education is a human right. Boy, this... It almost looks like old Soviet propaganda art, doesn't it? These people feel so strongly about education, you'd think they'd be educated to know that education is not a right. The Constitution doesn't mention that one. Let me clarify that. The United States Constitution doesn't mention that. This one does. This one. This is the Soviet Constitution. Oh, it mentions education. Free education for everybody. Mm -hmm. 
Let me help. Save the education. Rights do not come from government. They never have. If they do, you end up with a completely different government. You end up with a footstool. Or you end up with one of those things, the stockades. Your rights come from God. If government grants you rights, then you're a slave to the government because if they grant them, they can also take them away. In America, you don't have that right. This is what knowing what this chair is all about is all about. You've got to know what it is. Adding in education is just adding another coat of ugly paint. Another ding, another scratch, somebody else just standing on it or whatever. It wasn't designed to do that. 